Our next step is establishing the most important to the organization. Classifying data according to level of importance is a fundamental aspect of vulnerability management. For example, product development details for a new smartphone must be kept under wraps as well as the personal details of customers. This is the type of data that must never be in the public domain. No pressure. <laughs> Here's a good way to think about it. Information that needs to be classified as important includes product development details, financial data, customers' personal information, third-party agreements, and legal data. Like a sliding scale, documents need to be classified based on just how confidential they are. Organizations sometimes follow military protocol when classifying documents as unclassified, which would mean it's safe for public consumption and viewing, classified, indicates that this is intended only for owners, specific employees, or certain third parties under an NDA. Confidential is extremely sensitive information, intended only for employees that have authorization. Secret, extremely important. Access is strictly restricted. Top secret, highest security level. It goes without saying, so I'll say it with words. All non-public information must be protected by encryption. Like a good meal, the classification of documents often changes over time. The need to keep most information confidential typically diminishes through the information lifecycle. Remember, downgrading and declassifying information should be handled by authorized employees only. As we've seen with the Game of Thrones, the worth of an asset is not limited to its resale value. It's vital to consider the loss incurred if a particular asset is damaged or stolen, which can result in both business and legal implications. For many businesses, if damage or loss affects critical operations, the ability to keep the core business functions moving forward can be hampered or even temporarily stopped. In addition, certain security incidents can and have resulted in civil and or criminal liabilities. Vulnerability management must identify and call out which are considered critical and non-critical systems. As a baseline, assets can be categorized into one of four groups. Number one, human resource assets. This would include personnel, clients, and suppliers or vendor data. Number two, tangible assets. This is the stuff you can touch or is a thing like your buildings, equipment, IT infrastructure, electronic or paper files, and furniture. Uh, your March Madness bracket, although impressive, does not likely belong to this list. Number three, the intangibles. This would include brand value, reputation, and concepts. Things that take years to build, but within moments can be tarnished or devalued. Number four, operational assets. Think of these as both critical and non-critical processes and supply systems. Often these are valuable assets that are usually the backbone to productivity. Just like in a medical triage moment, you will need to evaluate each asset in terms of importance and assign a critical and non-critical label accordingly. In the event of a disaster, recovery of critical assets must be given top priority. For something to be deemed business level critical, that something must be either a customer interface process which will have a direct impact on business continuity and customer's ability to interact with a company, or it must be a product or service delivery asset. Assets deemed non-critical are typically necessary, but will cause immediate loss of business or marketing. Usually a few days of delay will not cause the company significant damage.